Potter's Journal always looking for a new market for my jugs and I may have found one in the maple syrup industry but how come all the people who come to me with an idea look rather, rather questionable and shady. What am I to do? Well, I'm not going to pass up any chances. Let's see if we can make some maple syrup jugs in the studio today. Hey, nice teeth. Are those ceramic? So, maple syrup jugs. I have got, this is um, two pounds, and these were one pound, two pounds, let's see, what's this, uh, four pounds, but I decided I'm going to need it to be um, four pounds in order for it to be the right size to use these little handles on. And I have found myself in a sticky situation that... Um, yeah, I, uh, it's so much easier to be a production potter and make a whole line of things pretty much the same. It's a lot harder for them all to be different. It, um, um, on my earlier rounds of the making 100 jugs, they were relatively the same. But they were different by the fact that they had XXX on them and uh, um, faces on them. That uh, the syrup jugs. I'm uh, trying to make them all different since um, there's nothing else much to distinguish the one from the other. And it is a lot more difficult making everyone different, especially when you have to, yeah, I need to know what I'm making in order. I, you always sketch it out um, in a journal. And um, often working out all the details. Here I haven't, or I might have five different um, versions going through my head at the same time. But in general, compared to the other jugs, and here's where I should be working and not talking. The uh, syrup jugs are shorter and stouter than a whiskey jug. Um, and already this one is not shorter and stouter. So let's see if we can still get a little bit of width on it. Shorter and stouter, um, often with uh, straight sides and sometimes with a sharp angle for the top part. Uh, maybe we can use a rib and push this out a bit. Okay, and uh, okay. So yeah, some of them uh, have spouts as well. Um, on okay, yes, um, um, a spout as well. Well, I guess these are spouted jugs in general, um, as opposed to pitcher jugs. Um, but um, what I mean is, like a pitcher jug. Um, having a pouring spout on them and I guess that's so embedded in the tradition that it even is on the plastic bottle jug which it doesn't do anything to make it help it pour uh, but it's still there okay and when coloring this in if you can manage to get finger on the inside it helps to um, um, yeah, keep the top um, level and compact and even. Uh, but part of the reason I 
started this series too was um, so I'm not just making mugs and pie plates and uh, this is about building up some skill levels and a jug being difficult to, and a collar in form to make um, so you could go to somebody who's better at this um, or I think maybe the clue uh, idea that I you may clue in on from this would be to set goals yourself and make some kind of challenge in what you do Um, I'm also finding these not as exciting as the earlier ones that um, with the straight sides I'm having trouble <laughs> putting straight sides on them that is a bit little boring and um, yeah it's like taking all the life out of it and this is one time when occasionally you do have to trim the top to get it even I trim the top but I also go and trim the sides to start to round it out rather than just force it rounding it In. Okay, I got a very sharp brand new rib that I'm able to take and bring in here and um, slice into the bottom. Get it cleaner and evener. Um, and then, yeah, here's where occasionally the uh, syrup jugs have very straight angles here and for some reason whether it's the way they're made a ridge down here so what that's about in the design I don't know but we will put it in a few of them And the next size up, the five pound ones, I will throw on a bat, but um, yeah, two pounds. It's easy enough to get off the wheel. That um, I'm surprised how many people are using bats to do all of this. at a huge expense in setting up a studio if you need to buy all the bats. Painfully slow to watch. These five pound ones took even longer. Um, next I'll do the spouts and this is in real time without fast forward and music edited into it so um, it's just something you've got to keep with it until you get it done. Okay, we'll get one of these, uh, finish up um, on the spouts on this next one. And once again, the disclaimer, I don't know how to do this, I'm just learning. Um, so if you do 101 of these, you can figure out how it's done too. Um, but here's the part where the finger, if you can get one in on the inside, it um, helps to stabilize that top as you bring it in.
and it always seems to the top always seems to need trimmed when the camera is watching. Okay, here's what I do. Everybody does the trim it off to even it out. But if you just start to round it off, it's very thick here and thin over here. So if you take a needle and also trim the outside, you will trim more of it where it's wider and less where it isn't wide, where it's thin. And it has it start it yeah rounded off already for you before you come back in with a sponge or with a leather. Okay, and some of these have um, for the pouring spout. They seem to have. A center that's rather narrow and then a top that flares out um, maybe to catch the syrup and bring it back in I don't know but since um, we are making syrup jugs we will put that on it okay except that one is flared way too much out so I am going to bring the top in. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, there were a few very old ones in the book that had just that top. And I'm looking at it thinking I did something wrong. Um, but there are some of the old ones that I looked at that were designed just like that. And it's actually one of the ones I think I was admiring. Okay, I think I left too much clay on the bottom of this, so I am not going to trim it off at a later, um, but trim it off right now. And I think that one I was admiring so much also had a couple of lines. grooves etched into it. Okay, right about there. Okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Thank you for liking my syrup jugs. Do subscribe and stop back for more. Okay, that's if time allows for you. I'm not sure quite what is in store for you.